A somewhat inconspicuous bridge once brought infamy to the Thai province of Kanchanaburi and the River Kwai. For many years, the infamous bridge on the River Kwai has attracted a great deal of tourists to the city of Kanchanaburi that has a population of 40,000. The bridge owes its worldwide fame to a novel by French author Pierre Boulle and a distinguished film by David Lean. However, due to its natural beauty, the province, which is located around 130 kilometers west of Bangkok, is also a popular holiday area. Several centuries ago, as part of a trade route from Cambodia to India, the Menam Kwai Yai was of great importance. Today, the river is one of the major attractions in Kanchanaburi that has gradually adapted to the needs of the tourist industry. A number of small, atmospheric hotels are located on the banks of the River Kwai and several sightseeing tours are available. For the adventurous, one of the best ways to experience both the river and its famous bridge is by canoe. The bridge is rather unobtrusive and relatively modern, though some sections date back to the Second World War and were integrated within a more recent structure. The bridge has been moved from its original location. Originally, the railway viaduct was located four kilometers further north. Despite this, the historic bridge on the River Kwai has lost nothing of its fascination and historic significance. It's a somewhat plain and unspectacular construction of steel and concrete, and it's in stark contrast to its moving and dramatic history. Now the picturesque River Kwai bears no obvious reminders of the horrors of the Second World War. Nevertheless, the construction of the original bridge is now indelibly associated with the tragic fate of those prisoners of war who were forced to undergo hard labor by the Japanese. Under the harshest of conditions, the construction of this railroad that subsequently became the target of Allied air raids commenced in 1942. In the spring of 1943, two bridges spanned the River Kwai, close to the town of Kanchanaburi. The following year, the air raids began. The British Royal Air Force mounted their attacks against the strategically important railway bridges of the Japanese from bases in India.
At first, the bombs missed their targets. But in February 1945, some sections of the steel bridge were destroyed. Thus, the Japanese army ordered the immediate reconstruction of the bridge, despite determined air raids by the Royal Air Force. Further sections of the bridge were destroyed until June 1945. While the Second World War had come to an end in Europe, the fighting continued in Asia. Allied prisoners of war and various Asian workers were forced to repair the bridges on the River Kwai in order to secure the supply line for the Japanese army. The Imperial Japanese Army was under repeated pressure from the Allied forces. Their supply routes were constantly under threat. The strategic importance of Kanchanaburi has now been overshadowed by the accounts of the construction work of this now legendary bridge that spans the River Kwai. Here, world history combines with numerous personal accounts of the prisoners of war who were set to work on this jungle railroad by the Japanese. Time has now hidden the scars of the air raids of the Second World War, and all is peaceful once again. But the daily horrors and years of imprisonment in the Kanchanaburi labor camp will never be eradicated from the memory of those who survived. former prize of war, the Iron Bridge originated from the Indonesian island of Java and was transported to the River Kwai in 1942. For the inhabitants of Kanchanaburi, the bridge is simply part of the scenery, but today, it attracts a large number of tourists. People from all over the world, Europe, North America and Australia, just like the former Japanese prisoners of war. Due to its close proximity to the Thai capital of Bangkok, the bridge is a very popular tourist attraction. Located close to the riverbank, today's train station was built on the site of the actual prison camp. The POW camp in Kanchanaburi was also attacked from the air by the Allies. Sometime after the war, part of the railroad was reopened. Each day, numerous passengers await the arrival of the train.
The steam train has now been relegated to the history books, but the unhurried speed of this diesel train is nonetheless a highly nostalgic experience. For train enthusiasts, the notorious railroad between Kanchanaburi and Nam Tok is particularly exciting. The train journey begins close to the River Kwai and follows the almost unchanged route of the former Death Railway. The train makes its way slowly and respectfully and passes the bridge that once cost so many lives. The precise number of POWs and Asians who perished on this section of the Death Railway is not known. However, the cruel working conditions of the prisoners who were forced by the Japanese to construct this railroad have been well recorded by those who survived. With the creation of the Death Railway, the Japanese planned to establish an alternative supply route across Southeast Asia. In 1942, the sea route to the Burmese city of Rangoon, in which large numbers of Japanese were based, was under the control of the Allied forces. In Burma, the Japanese army was in desperate need of a secure line of supply. The idea of building a railroad through the jungle in order to link Bangkok with Rangoon was nothing new. At the beginning of the 20th century, the British had thought of doing it, but due to the difficult terrain, the idea was shelved. The British realized that such a railroad would have been extremely expensive and labor-intensive. The fertile, flat plains of this area would not have posed any serious technical drawbacks, but a few kilometers away, the terrain was a far greater challenge. The journey to Nam Tok travels past picturesque scenery that includes vast fields and intriguing Buddhist temples. Sugarcane, tobacco and cotton are grown in the province of Kanchanaburi, but the largest area of cultivated land is dominated by paddy fields.
In addition to agriculture, gemstone mines also play an important role in the economy of this region. Unlike the British, who decided against the construction of a railroad here at the beginning of the 20th century, from a military point of view, the Japanese had little choice but to proceed with it. The Japanese set to work on this ambitious project in June 1942, and their plans were based on those of the British at the turn of the century. The construction of the railroad began simultaneously at each end, in Burma and in Thailand. The railroad was planned to travel 417 kilometers through near impenetrable jungle to its final destination of Tan Buaziat. In order to start their work on the Death Railway, the first Allied POWs were sent by train from Singapore to Thailand. In the south of Burma, various Australian prisoners of war had already begun work with the deforestation of some jungle areas. With little regard for loss of life, the POWs were shown no mercy at the hands of the Japanese. During the leisurely train journey, the wonderful landscape distracts passengers from the cruel realities of war. Despite the marvelous scenery, the journey into the remote northwest of Thailand is accompanied by a great deal of humidity. Only a few kilometers and the train leaves behind the vast fertile fields of Kanchanaburi. The railroad follows the narrow and meandering Minam Kwai Noi River, often at a dizzy height on the steep slopes of the riverbank. This is where the most difficult phase of the railroad to Burma began. The POWs had to cut their way through the rock with primitive tools. Even today, the journey on the former Death Railway that follows the Minam Kwai Noi is a real adventure. The shortage of food and lack of medical supplies made life for the exhausted POWs hell on earth. Several passengers get off at the next station. The short train journey comes to an end in the small town of Sayok. In Sayok, the tourists continue by bus. The near empty train is tranquil once again. The train has now reached the final section of the Death Railway.
The longer the construction work continued, the worse the situation grew for the totally exhausted POWs. The backbreaking work, continuous undernourishment, the outbreak of cholera, and the daily torture by the Japanese took its toll. Thousands of men died. With its jungle and mountain regions, this magnificent landscape is in stark contrast to the human suffering that once took place here. Now there are only a few passengers on the final stretch of the journey from Sayok to Namtok. Now so picturesque, but once so cruel. The train journey ends in the small station of Nam Tok. After the war, the rails that once led to Burma were removed. There is little time to explore the small town because the station master is already signaling for the train to leave. Several times each day, the diesel train makes its way on the notorious train line between Nam Tok and the bridge on the River Kwai, where further passengers are waiting. In the late autumn of 1943, the two routes from Thailand and Burma were finally joined, thus enabling the Japanese to use this new and much needed supply line. Both then and now, the trains travel slowly above the banks of the Menam Kwai Noi. The terrain is too hazardous for greater speed. Several of these bold wooden structures date back to the Second World War and were created by the former Allied prisoners of war. Even following the completion of the railroad, many prisoners were forced to live in the jungle as the bombs of the British made constant repair work necessary. We return to Kanchanaburi and the starting point of our adventure that now marks the end of this fascinating train journey on the Death Railway. Some of the dead are buried in the town's cemetery, but the exact number that died here will now probably never be known. In 1945, the Japanese destroyed all the documents that related to the death of the POWs and forced laborers. However, it's estimated that around 16,000 Allied soldiers and up to 100,000 forced laborers from each corner of Asia perished here. The 7,000 gravestones of the POWs within Kanchanaburi Cemetery and the legendary River Kwai are a tragic reminder of one of the saddest chapters in the history of Thailand.